Howdy, partners! Welcome to the Haunted Chronicles, episode 123, in living color. And I spelled it with a U because I'm British. And <laughs> we're going to share some stories with hauntings or ghosts that have a color to do with their name. We um, had a secret, unadvertised show last week, and it was a real humdinger, and it's available <laughs> in the on-demand section. <laughs> Tonight's episode is brought to you by Slinky. What walks downstairs, a loner in pairs, and makes a slinkity sound. For fun, it's a wonderful toy. It's Slinky. And by an evening with Annabelle, uh, that's on September 10th. Visit warrens.net for ticket information. And as a bonus treat, during our second half, we'll be talking with Laura Brewerton of Raccoon Crossing Rehabilitation. And we're going to get an update on little Davy Crockett. Love it. And Dave... um. I'll introduce everybody, and then we're, Dave has a special clip for you guys. I'm Mr. Mm-hmm. Haunted, joined by Brock Butterfree Burrows and Jennifer mm-hmm. Jigglypuff Runyon. Hey, hey. hey. You, you know, I got uh, that Pokemon the other day. You got a Butterfree? No, no, no. The, uh, uh, Jigglypuff. You got Jiggly? You got yeah. Jigglypuff? Yeah, I no, did. No, it's Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff. Yeah, nope. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. Someone did you think of talk. it? Did you yeah, as soon as I kind of said, Jennifer, I cut Jennifer. <laughs> Everyone's like looking at me like, what? That's funny. How are you? Oh, shoot. <sighs> what? Nothing. <laughs> we we got to ask Jennifer first, Jimmy. So oh, oh. Okay. S- settle down, Jimmy. All right. Okay, so I'm well. I'm well. I've had a week from hell. You know, Uh-oh. all good. Everything's good. No, everything's good. It was just like if any, I've dealt with fires, mm. um, house full of people. Still have construction here. You know, you know. It's but it's a typical Gen week. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's been crazy, but I'm good. I'm very good. How are you doing, Brock? I, you know, I'm doing pretty good. It was. It's been a, a crazy week, like it always is, and um, but. But I think it's yeah. going to be a great weekend. I'm going to a place I haven't ever been, and it's three hours away. It's the Biltmore Estate down Ooh. in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's, you know, reportedly haunted. And someone told me that they thought they allowed paranormal investigations, but um, I haven't found anything. So I figured someone went in and did one and, probably ruined it for everyone else mm. um but it's a gorgeous place i mean it's it's spread out um i don't know how many acres i saw they sold at one time 125,000 acres so it's a huge place um wow. and it the building they said back in 1800s was built for 5 million which would be easily 90 million today so ooh well that's going to be fun yeah, yeah, it should be very interesting, and uh, I'm, awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna take some pictures, yeah. so we'll we'll post them up and and uh, and see if we catch anything in the process. Yeah, that's awesome. When are you going, Brock? To tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's it's three only. It's only a little over three hours south, so it's it's not too bad. Um, and uh, we'll get down there and and get. Get going on the. I think it's we're. I'm doing the self guided house tour. I'm not going to pay for a tour. I'm just going to walk around like I own mm-hmm. the place. Yeah, probably, like you your know, like your King Henry VIII or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like I, I think the people that owned it, Dave might know this, but I think it was the. Uh, um, oh, the name just slipped my mind. Um, it'll come to me, but uh, I'm just going to go into the the King Suite and. Just lay down. I think I saw somewhere they have 43 bathrooms. That was my oh. nickname in high school, Brock. What? King Sweet. King oh. <laughs> I, I'm going to throw it back to Jennifer on that one. <laughs> so, Jimmy. Yeah. How are you? Funny you should ask. Mm-hmm. I'm happier than a, a Panamanian pygmy turtle jumping on a pile of Cool Ranch Doritos, like he's Christopher (laughs) freaking Columbus. (laughs) Nice. Cool Ranch Doritos. Dr. David 
Yeah. Um, you guys, I think you guys know, you've heard us say that we uh, sing a lot and say stuff during the breaks and, and when we're ready to go on air. And Dave recorded us last, was it last week. <laughs> yeah. And, and we'd like to share it with you. Yeah. This is what goes on while you're not listening. Doodly doo. Doodly doo doo doo. I'm gimpy. <clears throat> you are. Damn it. You gotta take an Epsom salt bath. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> That blind still makes me laugh. Did you do it? Wow. Um, I, I, I just told Dave to play that every week, and now I never want to hear it again. Here's a bigger <laughs> person. No, I'm horrible. I don't think that. Sorry for well, that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. Well, it, 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 it humored us. Right? You know, I do. Before we get into our, our stories and, and stuff, I do have some breaking news. Miss Cleo, the psychic fraud, who, <laughs> who, who services the Psychic Re- Re- Readers Network, built people out of one billion dollars. Died. Too bad. Anyways, well, no, hold right. on, hold on. How did how did she <laughs> die? This is hilarious. I, I no, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's hilarious. It was, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't think anybody read anything further than that she passed away. Yeah, I think it was sad. Because I think she pissed... Yeah, it's sad. I don't want to talk about it. She, but she pissed a lot of people off, so, you yeah. know. It is sad, but it was an um, undetected... I think undetected colon cancer. Oh. And many wonder if, if she was psychic, why didn't she know it? Yeah, yeah. I saw that, too. Mm. She did get... <sighs> uh, I don't have the numbers with me for... Um, she had to pay back like five... Five million or five hundred million dollars or something, and um, yeah, there's a big story about her. We could do a whole show on a Miss Cleo one day. We'll do a we'll do an honorary show for her one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I have scary movie celebrity birthdays, and it's already eight thirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do them. All right, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is in Total Recall, Predator, End of Days, True Lies, Terminator, The Running Man, and my favorites, Kindergarten Cop, and Jingle All the Way. How old will Arnold Schwarzenegger be next week? Hmm. Da Terminator. Um, I, uh, I'm going to say 73. I'm going to say 72. Okay. 69 years old. <gasps> Ooh. <And> JK. <laughs> oh, that was... That didn't go the way I thought it would. I thought I was, I really kind of was cocky with that one. I thought I knew it, but I, I didn't. He was, he was your governor. Mm. I forgot about that. Yeah, my husband um, did a movie with him. Did you hear about the governor. Get out of here. He did. Which movie? Jingle All the Way. That's one of my favorites ever. <laughs> All right, good. We're going to get some stuff from that. Uh, uh-huh. Future. You know what my favorite quote from that whole movie is? <laughs> who's the um, who's the bad guy? The comedian Sinbad, right? Sinbad. Uh huh. When he was like running around the um, it was a parade or something going on, and yes. um, and, so, and he pushed one of the parade people. He goes, "Get out of the way, box!" And he threw him down. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to rewatch uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so sixty-nine. Yeah. <laughs> J.K. Rowling. Who was the writer of the Harry Potter book series? It was a bad week for birthdays. J.K. Rowling next week. <laughs> J.K. Okay. Um, well, 58. Wow. I thought she was younger. Oh, she probably is. Don't, don't pay, pay me any mind. She might be, bro. She might be? Yeah. She Can you give me a range on how much she might be lower? Uh, I was going to say 46. 51. She'll be 50. Oh. Oh, that was okay. It was really bad this week. And uh, one more. James, <laughs> okay. James Hetfield um, has a birthday August 3rd, and he's the lead vocalist, guitarist, and songwriter for the band Metallica. Oh, I'll get another this. James Hetfield. 
Well, what band? Metallica. Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like Tommy Lee with the drums? No. Okay, see, no. I don't know. I don't know. Was, I'm gonna they do the uh, song Inner Sandman and... Fuel, give me fire, Isn't give it? me that which I desire. Ooh. Oh, them. Of course. Yeah. Uh, let's say... I'm going to say 69. Um, oh, they they do our... We come into the inner Sandman. I can't get this wrong because it'll stop. Uh, 54? This is really funny. This is the sound of me unwrinkling paper. Because I threw it out already. I think he's 53. Okay. You can wow. fact check me on that one, though. I literally threw it out. I was so disgusted with Miss Cleo. Wow. Ding. 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 I don't even know what happened. Ding. Ding. Yeah, close enough. (laughs) So, so we have five minutes (laughs) to do some some hauntings with colors in them. (gasps) Okay. All right. So you 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 came. What was the one you the the blue boy? Oh well, you know what. The, oh, the baby blue one. I yeah. was, I think I mentioned that like a um, a few weeks ago in the beginning. So uh-huh. I'm gonna do the um. I have a this one's called this one's the longest one I have. It's called uh-huh. the Black Monk of Pontefract. Anybody Ooh. ever hear that one? No. Mm-hmm. Very scary story. Okay. During the 1860s and early 70s, the Pritchard family of West Yorkshire, England, were haunted by what is called the Black Monk of Pontefract. In 1966, shortly after moving in, strange occurrences began. While the rest of the family was away on holiday, their son Philip, aged 15, was alone with his grandmother Sarah. Philip and his grandmother started feeling cold gusts of wind inside the house. Philip witnessed a white powder falling from midair onto the living room floor and it was covering all the furniture and stuff, and it appeared in like the middle of the room. Not from the ceiling. Shortly after this, puddles of water began appearing on the kitchen floor. They called the plumber, and he couldn't give any explanation. That same night, a heavy chest of drawers began rocking by itself. Philip and his grandmother left the home to sleep at a neighbor's that night. Well, when Mr. and Mrs. Pritchard came home with their 12-year-old daughter, whose name is Diane, activity increased and seemed to be centered around Diane. She was often thrown from her bed and once was dragged up the stairs by an invisible force that left lacerations on her neck. Loud crashes were common and objects would fly around and disappear and reappear in different locations. Blessings of the house only seemed to agitate the situation. Um, Painted upside down crosses appeared on walls and doors. Sometime later, a physical uh, manifestation appeared. Joe and Jean, I think Pritchard, the parents, were lying in bed and saw a black cloaked figure with a cowl over its head. Not a cow, not a. Uh, I just yes. read a cowl. A cowl. Yeah. Over its head, hovering over their bed, and then dissipated. Visitors also witnessed this monk like figure, but couldn't uh, ever see its face. A theory on why or who was haunting them is said to have been um, a 16th century monk who was found guilty of rape and murder of a girl and was hung near their property. And um, and that's where it's had its gallows. So, oh, guess what happened when Aunt Maud came to visit? She... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Aunt Maud, what happened? I, mean, I could picture her in my head. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I have a vision of Aunt Maud already. Aunt yeah. Maud came over to visit, and she was a non-believer. The lights went out. The refrigerator door opened, and a jug of milk floated out and poured itself onto Maud's head. <laughs> Family. That's where the cow comes in. I knew it was coming somewhere. See? The, the, see, I try to lighten it up so everybody doesn't get too scared. Yeah. <laughs> the family witnessed two furry hands reached, reaching around the door 
one at the top of the door and one at the bottom. So it looked like some big, huge monster behind the door. They discovered that there were just Maud's gloves moving by themselves. Maud had fur, fur gloves? Like Apparently. Hands, like paws. She, she was Miss Fancy Pants. <laughs> she was Fancy Pants. Yeah. The last on. time. Gasita. Go ahead. The Bagasid. <laughs> the last time the monk was seen, yeah. Diane and Philip were watching TV, and they saw the monk through the glass kitchen door. Philip ran after it, and it disappeared into the kitchen floor, and that was the last they ever saw or heard of the black monk of Pontefract. Wow. That is a good story right there. I love that story. Yeah, it is a good story. I'm going to sleep tonight. Jeez. Jeez. Brock, how, how, how was Diane though? Did Diane make it out okay? Yeah, she's all right. They actually yeah. some people called it the uh, <laughs> the um, the pon- the a uh, poltergeist case because of the um, the young girl was involved. Yeah, in on her yeah. and all the movement of objects and stuff. Yeah. But um, I didn't I didn't research it too much. But uh, there has to be a movie right there. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Let's, let's get the jingle all the way, producers. Yeah, right on. yeah. Well, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Mm. Wow, wanna... Jimmy. <laughs> Anybody want to hear? You, do you have one, Jen? Well, I do have one. Oh. All right, let me get it. Let me get it up here. You know, now that I'm Skyping, <laughs> I have to... <laughs> I Okay, really quick. Can you Skype and... Um, and then go on to your, like, mail. Yeah. If I if I close out, see, I'm I'm so confused. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm I not think going so. to okay. switch well, switch tabs. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I don't need to because I figured it out here with my phone. Okay, so this is the little girl in the rose colored dress. <gasps> so I here's the story. I lived in a house from hell for four years, from age eleven to almost sixteen. There was constantly something happening, doors flying open and shut, voices, footsteps. Nothing ever stayed where you put it. I was alone there a lot because my parents worked, and I was constantly terrified. One of the most gut-level disturbing things, though, was the little girl in my bathroom. Every time I walked past my bathroom door, which was constantly since it was right outside my bedroom, I saw a little girl with blonde curled hair, and a rose-colored dress. She just stood there staring at me like a photograph from 1905. I kept, I started keeping, sorry about that, I started keeping the door closed so I could walk by without seeing her, but she was always there when I opened it. Once I stepped inside and went past her, I couldn't see her any anymore, but I could feel her there. She scared me, but I felt really sorry for her because she was trapped there, just like me, but probably forever. As the years went by, things in the house continued to get worse. She started seeming darker. I started feeling like she really wasn't a little girl. I knew there was something ugly in the house, and I felt like it it was presenting this sympathetic image to me. Then I started thinking I was completely losing my mind. One day when I was 14, I had a friend from out of town come stay with me for a week. I hadn't told her anything whatsoever about the house because... I didn't think she would come if I did. Right after she got there, we were sitting in my room and she left to go use the restroom. After a minute, she came walking back in with a puzzled look on her face and said, so there's a little girl in your bathroom. And I said, "Uh, yeah, she hangs out in there. Blonde hair, curls, pink dress. And she said, yeah, you know, that's not really a little girl, don't you? I almost threw up. I was so relieved and terrified and excited and ready to run out of the house screaming. She wouldn't, she wouldn't use my bathroom the rest of the week. And I started using it as a little, as little as possible without making my parents angry. Eventually we moved out of there and I could not have been a happier. I distanced myself mentally as much as I could. Then was when I was 18, I took another friend. It's almost over. And we packed up a few things, left the house. Uh, my, oh, oh, yeah, the, we, we, we ended up leaving the house. We packed up a few things. My parents hadn't managed to sell it. So 
it wouldn't be for five more years. The minute we got on the property, my friend seemed uncomfortable. When we came around the bend in the long, steep driveway, he went completely white. I could tell something was wrong, but he insisted he was okay. So we got to work. After a while, he used to he asked to use the washroom and I directed him to mine. Not 20 seconds later, he came running back gasping for breath and slammed the bedroom door behind him. He started babbling about a blonde little girl who wasn't really a little girl. All of a sudden he went dead still, looked me in the eye and very solemnly said, she's not happy with you. You Mm. left and you weren't supposed to. We threw whatever we could grab into with a car and left, and my parents had to figure the rest out for themselves. Wow, I never heard that one. Crazy. That's a crazy little little lady, little baby girl in a rose-colored dress. Now I Don't can't you? use the bathroom. Mm-mm. Rock, you're, you're in trouble tonight. You're going to have furry <laughs> hands around the door and a little girl in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I got I got one short one. Yeah. This is called the Green Lady. And this is a cemetery I actually went to that's in my area. I only went once or twice. I didn't really find anything. But mm-hmm. I like the story behind it. Mm-hmm. The Green Lady is said to haunt the Seventh-day Baptist Cemetery in Burlington, Connecticut. There are many witnesses who claim they have seen the ghost who usually appears with a green mist. Most say she appears, smiles, and then disappears. Some believe it is the spirit of Elizabeth Pometer, who drowned in a nearby swamp while searching for her missing husband, Benjamin. What she didn't know was that Benjamin was not missing, but was in town waiting out a bad snowstorm. So Elizabeth's husband eventually found her body in the swamp wearing a green dress some people also witness a light in the cemetery thought to be the lantern of Benjamin looking for his wife. Oh. And I did go there. I'm not saying it's not haunted or she doesn't haunt it. I just didn't, you know, I didn't capture anything there. Yeah, you didn't see anything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. <clears throat> you know, you know, I do have to just really quick before you go to break. Um, you know, you guys talk about Annabelle. Yeah. All the time, right? You know, yeah. And I, yeah. yeah. Well, Mike, so I go, I go up to uh, see my brother this weekend, and um, mm-hmm. my, the, there was a huge fire there, by the way. That's what I was saying about the fire. So I was kind of up there and, you know, witnessing all this. But anyway, my cousin came over, and my cousin is a special effects guy. He's working on Annabelle, too. <gasps> I know. I'm like, shut up. I have to tell Brock, Dr. Dave, and Jimmy. I, that's crazy. So, yeah, he's doing Annabelle, too. Wow. Kind of fun little fact. Wow. Wouldn't it be cool if he gave you the prop? I could ask him. Ask him. What's he going to say? How could he say no? no? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask him. I'll ask him. All right. You know, we have a couple of minutes before break. Oh. I'm going to, um, Brock, do you have that thing ready that you want to to try out? Oh, the yeah. Hold on. I'm putting the battery in. All right. Tell us what you have there. I have a Furby. It it won't shut up either. It it was so funny because I we were talking about something last week, and I said, "Oh crap, I have my Furby," and uh, and so I I put batteries in it because it hadn't been run for a long time, and. Um, when I put batteries in, nothing worked. I couldn't get it, so I had to take it apart. So I put a, I went live and ripped the fur up, and there's one gear you had to move, and it started working. But it sounds like the gears are going bad. But supposedly it would shut up after a while, and then when you push like the tongue, it would say like that. It would say yum, like you're feeding it. If you hold it upside down, it used to talk backwards, but it doesn't anymore. <laughs> I tried to get it. I was like, man, how great would that be? But yeah, it just keeps talking. What is he saying though? What's he saying? I, I have no idea. I think it's what? saying his name. Uh, fee, fee, way, go, fee, 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 fee. <laughs> exactly. Fee, fee. But you get there's like sensors and you can make wow. it purr. Let's see if I get the purr. 
There you go. <laughs> it's, it said that felt good. So it, it's 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 Crazy. weird, but they used to like when the lights went off. There's a sensor that they would go to sleep. You could talk to it; it would talk back to you. I think it's just lost its marbles now, and it just keeps repeating <laughs> yeah. over and over. So you have to keep taking the batteries because it never shuts up. But uh, but I thought it was interesting because it's it's kind of this thing used to freak me out when I was little uh, when I had it because you'd be sleeping at night and something would like, if you touched it or whatnot, it would go off and um, you know, it would just start talking. So I always wondered, you know, I'm going to take the batteries out now. And if it starts talking, then it's going in the trash. So that's a little Furby for everybody. I have an idea for later. We could try that in reverse and see what he's saying backwards. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, but yeah. Um, we'll be right back with more Haunted Chronicles, and we're going to be speaking to Laura Brewerton on the other side of the James Hetfield song. See you later. Yay. Welcome back to the Haunted Chronicles, home of your guaranteed halftime shout-out to everyone in the chat room today. Um, thanks for coming, Barry, Heavy Metal Psychic, Indy Dwayne, Mama Bear 101, Tiffany, Dr. Dave, Sprinkles, Maggie, Renee, Nicholas Benedict, Ted Do Chad, Randy, uh, Paul, our executive in charge, Debbie, B. and Hank Russell, Candy, Mark, Tony, Chubby Spaniel, and over Wayne Schnedeker, um, Kelly Ray, VPG, Brock, Victor, and Linda, and I have uh, Corey, Light, Terry, Frankie B, and Junebug. And also, I'll do the people that share the page, the groups, and then I'll shut up. Paranormal Planet, Electric City Paranormal, Big Bear Ghost Seekers, On the Fringe with Art Bell and Heather Wade, Interviews from Beyond, Paramania Radio, Best Paranormal Radio and Podcasts, Breathe, Ghosts and All Things Paranormal, <laughs> Demon Files, Friends, uh, Independent to Paranormal Research Circle, Edge of Fear, Realm of the Unknown, Paranormal Billboard, and Appalachian UFO Research Society. And we have a guest. And also tonight, listen to our friend who has an open line show tonight, Heather Wade, on uh, MidnightInTheDesert.com. That starts at 12 Eastern Time. And we have a guest with us now, Laura Brewerton of the Raccoon Crossing Rehabilitation is with us in the studio as we speak. <laughs> Laura? Hi. Yes? How are How you? How are you today? Good. It's I so remember. fun to have her here. This is so cool. I mean, you, you guys have now developed a friendship because of little Davy Crockett. We love this. We have. <laughs> I've, I've been mentioning for the last few weeks about my whole raccoon story that he kept coming to my house, and Laura's the um, Laura helped me out with the raccoon. So thank you, Laura. Yeah, You're that's welcome. awesome. So Laura, what, now tell us how did you how how did this all come about? Because you have the you, you have the uh, crossing the raccoon crossing rehabilitation center. How did this all start? Believe it or not, my husband brought home three baby raccoons for the kids. Oh. Now for the kids. <laughs> oh my goodness! As soon goodness. as I saw them, I just fell in love, and they were um, teeny. They were eyes closed babies, and um, I was able to get one of the three to survive. And we had Jack, who um, was basically a pet um, before we knew the rules. And uh, he had a doggy door. He went in and out of the house and did his thing, and then. Uh, Decided he wanted to be wild and went about his own thing. Oh, for heaven. So he ended up going back out and living his life out in the wilderness. Wow. Yeah, yeah he never had a cage or anything, so he knew the yard and, you know, knew the yeah. area. And, yeah. So, so it, did that – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. I, know, I just want to know his name. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, it was Jack, right? Oh, Jack. Jack, yeah. Jack, aww. So did you, <laughs> now, did, is that, so, so after Jack left, did you guys go, hey, we love the raccoons, let's, let's figure this out and create this, this uh, center for well, them? No, we um, learned that there are rules. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and and permits that we needed to have, and um, so I took the classes uh, through the DEEP, and um, I'm a licensed re- wildlife rehabilitator now, and I am specialized in RVS, which is rabies vector species, which raccoon are. Um, I also do skunks. I can do skunks, but I ch- I love I love the raccoons just so much more. Yeah. So that's what I stick so- with. So what does that mean that they're um, rabies dominant, or what? Are, what you just said? What does that mean exactly? Rabies vector species. They they have the they can carry rabies. They're, they can be rabies carriers. Basically, how you want to um, look at it is they have the vector is like a little vessel in their bodies that mm-hmm. can carry the rabies um, virus. We've actually had um, in the eight years that I've been doing this, we've had seven positive rabies babies. Um, and one of them as late as seven weeks after he was in our possession. So it's it, it basically they har- they can harbor it, you know, for a oh, while. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah. is there any coming back from that, or is once they have that, that's it? It's a death sentence, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. I kind of figured. I just want to make sure I'm asking all the right questions. So now, now, how many do you have on your at your center at your home? Forty forty five right now. Oh my gosh! Wow! And now, what do you do? So, do people bring them in. You find them. How, how does it? How does that all work? Well, we're registered with the DEEP, and many other wildlife rehabilitators know who does what. Um, we get calls in from the public and animal control officers, police departments. Um, you can go right on the uh, DEEP website and get our names there also. You can punch in, where do I, you know, I found a baby bird. What, who, what can I do? And they'll right. give you a bird rehabber. Um, so that's how we so Jimmy, find them. They find me. <laughs> Jimmy was saying how um, when you came to, to, to you know, r- rescue Davey from Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, from the yard. But when you came to uh, to to get him, you just you just picked that little guy up from the scruff of his neck like a mama cat would, and that's no yep. fear. Yeah, no, you have I, no, I, you have no fear with any of them, do you? No, I I think that if you show your fear, they know it, so it makes them more aggressive. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, I've handed back where um, people have stolen babies from the mom. We've, I've handed them back to the mom, and we've reunited a lot. Um, it's one of our biggest things is people just basically stealing, or people will trap the mom and relocate the mom because she was in her attic, and then we've got these babies. Oh. So education oh. is huge. Yeah. Yeah. How big is a baby raccoon when it's, like, a couple weeks old? Well, born at 65 to 90 grams. That's not too big. So, no, that's really little. <laughs> Was it like they're a McNugget? Little. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're small. Um, you could, I could probably fit three of them in my hand when they're first born. Wow. They're that little. Um, we released around 10 pounds, which is about six months old. Uh, in the wild, the mom raccoon will keep, keep her young for almost a year. So we're limited to what we can do. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a rush, rush, rush from day one to teach them everything they need to be taught. And how, how do you do that? How do you teach them, you know, to stay, you know, wild and to not get domesticated? Well, um, it's kind of like a baby, you know. When they're young, you're really hands-on. And as they get older, you've got to let them explore and learn. And um, then when they're about 17, 16, 17 weeks, we start doing no talking around them, no hands-on. Um, we go, we do their pens once a, once a day. Um, so, and then they get wild. So then by like the third week of doing that, when we go out there, they hide. They don't want to stay. And so that's where they start getting the uh-huh. fear of humans is what they want it, we want them to have, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Plus, Jennifer, they put them through CrossFit. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I um, I've had two experiences with raccoons, 
The first was my old house where I saw him. I mean, this little sucker came out and loved to just tear up my lawn. And I, I mean, it was, it was, it was like, like a caddyshack where I was determined I was going to catch this little guy and it wasn't so little actually, but I went and got a, a trap, you know, they told me what to do cause I called the, you know, animal control. And so I went and got the trap. I rented this trap and that sucker, <laughs> it was too smart. There was no way I, I couldn't even catch it. And the second was my new house. I have koi fish and goldfish. And (laughs) yeah, you know, exactly. It's been, (laughs) I mean, I had the rabbits out there, you know, spraying the water whenever they come up. So, so far they're gone. So I'm kind of hoping maybe we're off their radar or something, but they, they love the fish. They love, they, they get in trouble sometimes. They're pretty naughty. Yeah. I uh, say Jack was, the raccoons are very intelligent. Jack could open up our back door. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so, they're so cute. Yeah. They're so cute. Now, when they're domesticated, when they're tame, are they just, what, your, your Jack, was he just the most loving thing? Could you hold him in your lap and watch TV with him? <laughs> I mean, I would love a raccoon. I think they're the cutest things I've ever seen. He slept in my bed at night. <laughs> How's that? Oh, my God. That's the cutest thing. Yeah, it was like a cat, a big cat, um, you know, and then as he, as he became mature, around 18 months, he, they wiled up on their own, and he said, oh, you know, this isn't the life I want, I want to go and meet some female coonies, and yeah, he learned a different, you know, it was kind of like letting your kids go to college. Yeah. How old was you know, when he went to go out on his own? <laughs> when he, about when 18, he about around 18 months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he wow. flew the coop, he's like, I'm done. <laughs> Love you. Sound, sounds like a little Jimmy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So now, now, what what was the diag- diagnosis with Davy Crockett? What was his story? Jim, you want to start? Yeah, Jimmy, tell us what you notice. Well, and well, I've I've been telling them for the last few weeks since since he came started coming to visit me, and he he used to come in and just um, sit by the door and wanting food and water and i'd feed him and then one day he started um you know he came up kind of hobbling up and he was growling a little bit and i you know i could tell something was wrong and i didn't know what and i i noticed that a lot of people laura if you could clarify this for a lot of people um people tend to think that if a raccoon's out during the day they automatically you know uh go to rabid which necessarily isn't the case especially you could tell how like when they're babies what happens maybe what happens there? Yeah, um, mom. Well, male raccoons will kill the babies at night, so the female raccoons need to stay with their babies. So to see them during the day is because they're eating, oh. um, and they'll bring the babies out during the day. A lot of times, if you'll be walking through the woods and stuff, you can see mom. And if you look, they're not going to just sit there, look, you know, waiting for somebody to see them. But they'll sit, they'll be on trees, branches, limbs, playing on the ground by a tree. Very common to see. If they feel safe somewhere, they're not afraid to be seen during the day. Uh Uh-oh. And and what what do you think happened to little Davy? Little Davy Crockett? We think he got hit by a car. Uh, We're not sure. He's got some walking issues. Um, He's still under quarantine. A couple more. They won't quarantine for three weeks. Let me look up when he's. He's off on the third. Oh, next week. Third. So now, yeah. do you have so to then do, we'll do, start, do you do a test to tell? Can is there? How do you find out? Blood test for the rabies thing. The for diagnosis? rabies? No. Yeah. Usually, rabies. If they're actively having rabies, they're gone within three days. Okay, okay. So he's been here a lot longer than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's not rabies that he has. Um, you know, we'll, we'll find out. We'll be more hands-on once he's off quarantine. Um, Is he still grouchy? Yeah, he's still grouchy. That's okay, though. That's his age. And he's been, you know, he's been uh, out in the wild on his own, and now he's 
confined to a cage, which I'm sure he's not happy about. But he'll get a bigger one in a couple more days. And uh, did he ask for crunch berries yet? <laughs> he has not asked for crunch berries yet, no. <laughs> he really seems to enjoy those. But he has asked for a, yeah. a hard taco shell. I did. <laughs> he wants a taco. Oh, he loved a taco. What's, what is, what's a good food to feed them? Is that, I, I still don't know. Taurine is no good for them. That's in cat food. Um, we oh. give them dog food here. Okay. Um, we give them egg, chicken, scrambled eggs, hard-boiled eggs, um, and then raw eggs as they get older. Oh, wow. Um, any kind of fruit, yeah. They're good what's, their main, what's their main food they eat when they're in the wild? What do they uh, eat? Well, any small mammals. They eat grubs and um, bugs. They eat fish and crayfish, um, small birds, eggs, berries. Yes, oh, they worm. do eat eggs. They do eat eggs. Yes, because yeah. the one last year caught my mama duck's nest and killed all killed the mama duck and took her eggs. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. found the shells. Ripped her to shreds. By the way, just want to. Oh, sounds like a yeah. box, but okay. Oh, and they, you know what? But you know what? Maybe yeah. it was. Maybe it was. You know, poor. Ra- I shouldn't blame the raccoon. That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Laura, when now when Davy comes out of um, on the third out of uh, you know quarantine, what happens? What's the next step to help him? Well, we see we we see exactly what his difficulties are, and then we work with that. We start advancing him, trying to get him. We want him to be released. That's our goal. Um, so it depends on what he's got going on. Yeah. Like maybe he needs a little physical therapy. Like you have to lift his leg up a little bit. <laughs> that's what I little... wanted to ask, but I felt embarrassed. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked it. <laughs> you laugh, but that's exactly what I mean. Oh. <laughs> so it's really, so what, how do you, how is he, do you have to, to sedate them a little bit or, I mean, how does it work with their, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not real pleasant are they you know i mean they're pretty vicious sometimes so how do you do that they are we wear gloves we wear very heavy gloves and um eventually most of them are won over i'm pretty good at um getting them to cooperate oh that's so cute the harder part is getting them to wild up usually oh so they like it they like staying they like staying with you well, like, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah. You know, I think that I every would. day. You don't have to do look for your food. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, yeah. And for for people not in the chat room, um, you're you have a Facebook page, Raccoon Crossing Rehabilitation. So if you um search that, that's um Laura's page. And is there any way if anybody like wanted to make a donation? Is there any um is it on that page or is there a link or anything? I didn't see one. Um, I can always mail a donation so, to me. All right, so work. so they'll mail me a donation, and I'll bring it right to you. I'll give that them That sounds a perfect. You trust me. I do. Davy <laughs> needs food. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little Davy. Yeah. Hey, oh, you'll off, see, off. I think you'll see a change in him in the next month. And uh, Laura, this is putting you right on the spot. I said we wouldn't put you on the spot. Did you ever have any kind of haunting activity in your lifetime? Actually, I did. Oh, <laughs> tell, tell, tell you us. <laughs> oh, tell us. Oh, my God, this is fantastic. Tell us. <laughs> when I, I was it. a little kid, I, well, my sister and I were walking, and we saw UFO. That's about all we saw. Of, uh, we were little. We were what? scared. We just ran. <laughs> well, what did it look like? What, 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 was, it, what was the shape? This, uh, you know, same typical uh, circular, spher- yeah. spherical, you know, shape. It was, um, you know where the new hospital is in Maryland, Mid-State Hospital? Yes, yes, yes. It was actually in that field years and years ago when I was a kid. It was, there was just a big field there, and it was actually in that field that my sister and I saw it. Oh. And what, it just, did it, yeah. was it just cruising around, or did it uh, go It was just sitting there, yeah, no. No, we were just sitting there. And, I mean, we walked that path all the time, and it was nothing was ever there before. And then all of a sudden... So, wait, was it, was it, it was in the air, or was it, was it on the ground? On the ground. <gasps> Ooh. 
Why didn't you call saying, me? Yeah, you, I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> I was nine. How old are you? <laughs> I was 48. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I... Wow, so again, I believe that there are. I believe that they're uh, phenomenal. There's another, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Back to. Yeah, definitely if something out there. Raccoons are aliens. Okay, that was one of the Forget that. Then I am the queen. <laughs> you, are. Exactly. you are. You are the raccoon queen, baby. <laughs> oh my god. No, that you, would be perfect, are, right? Yeah. Well, you are the raccoon whisperer. That's we're going to give you that title because look at all you do. I mean, how many successful um, releases have you done? We do between sixty and a hundred raccoon a year. Wow, that's so cool. That's really cool. And you run just by donation too, right? I mean, you you look for, you know, yeah, we, people. We who are help nonprofit. You mm-hmm. We are non nonprofits, so anything, any donations are tax deductible. Um, but yeah, we have a big fundraiser in March. Um, we're actually going to have a small table up at um, a place called Hope in Madison, where I was having a fundraiser there. We'll be there we're with some pictures. Live. Excuse me. We're gonna, we're gonna broadcast live and put Davy on the air. Okay, that's really? pretty. But hey, I can't. You, I can't bring the raccoon. But let oh. us know what what do you what what does the fundraiser do? Is it an auction? Is it a? And the one in March, yeah, we did a big one um, in August like this year at the Portuguese Club. We had a huge. We had like thirty some odd baskets, silent auction. We had um, concert tickets. We had um, a bake sale. We had live performers. We had yeah, we had a really good time. Well, I'll but just, it basically I'll, I'll funded our a, whole. I'll give you a donation for your next um, fundraiser, something from Ghostbusters that you can, awesome. uh, with a picture, and you can auction that off with your next fundraiser in March for sure. I'm buying that. Oh, okay. <laughs> there <great>. you go. <laughs> right, again, Absolutely. that's Raccoon Crossing Rehabilitation. And um, Laura, thank you very much for joining us. We're already out of time. Next week, we have Willie Ames. Jets into the Haunted Chronicle studios. His last visit was in 2014. We have a lot mm-hmm. of catching up to do. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Thank, Thank you, you Jennifer, Jennifer, Brock, Dr. Dave. Thank you, Paul, for all the links. Thank you, listeners. Good night. Good night, Good fellas. night everybody. Good night. Thank you.